And then you had um, you had uh, competing standards organizations in the 80s. So there was like this standards war. It's why we have ISIS and OSPF, because you had the IETF that was doing their standards. And then you had the ISO that was doing their standards. And that's why ISIS and OSPF are so different. Not to like, you know, diverge, but that's why things are so kind of, you know, sometimes you sit and ask, like, why did they do it this way? And it's because you had two different companies that were both driving these different organizations for, you know, Cisco was heavily in the ITF. Um, I think it was, uh, who was it that was in uh, ISO? Uh, I can't remember if it was DAC or Xerox or who it was, but one of the one of the heavy hitters for mainframes back in the day was heavily into ISO. So you had all these routing protocols and these network standards that all competed against each other um, for a while, just like IP competed against you know IPX, SPX, and SNA and all that stuff. So BGP came out of that era of that '80s era of all this competition and all this. We're going to make all the things and all the standards. And EGP is what ran it for a while, and then it eventually became BGP. And I'd have to look up the dates. I don't remember exactly when that happened, but I want to say it was like late 80s, early 90s that we started transitioning from EGP to BGP. So BGP has been around is for that a Is that because EGP couldn't handle the scaling that <laughs> it's, was happening? You know, I never, EGP was before my time. I never ran it. Yeah, but yeah. my understanding is that as a protocol, like I've only ever seen it as a footnote on a page. I never ran it. I never looked at it. I never put a config <laughs> right. on a router for EGP. My best understanding of EGP is that it wasn't designed for scale. It didn't have any of the knobs or the, you know, it just did not have the the nerd knobs that we need and the capabilities that we needed to be an internet scale protocol as we know the internet today. I'm realizing as we're sitting here, all of my all of my questions are, are from my time in fintech. So right before we jump to IBGP, I have one more question. So you said you had two companies merging and they had overlapping IPs and you applied communities so that overlapping IP of company A wouldn't get advertised over to overlapping, you know, company B. Is that Semi correct. Yeah, no, it's a hundred. You were blocking correct. overlapping. IP. No, that's exactly. So how would they? So wouldn't that prefix or service be unreachable on the other side? Wasn't that a problem? And the reason I'm asking is yeah. how I saw it, quote unquote, solved. We put a gigantic honking NAT firewall between the two companies and added tens to elevens, and I think it's still running like that because it's such a mess trying to deal with overlapping IPs. Now one to one that c- converting to V6 would solve that, but I'm told it, that. That isn't happening yet. No, it, it does. Yeah, place. it does solve that. Um, and I, I won't yeah. even go down that rabbit hole because I could talk for five hours. But that's on, what on you that. should. I mean, that's what you should do. <laughs> yeah. No. But. I mean, that's you know, in the and the the nice thing about V six that we use in the when you do mergers nowadays is you use it for management. So you you use V IPv six for management because if you have over if it's just management that you're overlapping, you build IPv six. They run in parallel. 